Hey and welcome to my channel, I'm glad you tuned in. In this episode I want to talk to you a little bit about the Folklander 35mm 1.4 multi-coated version 2. Very long name for a very small lens. But I think it is a very important lens if you want to get into the M system. Um, and maybe one of the best 35mm to start with if you're looking for a budget lens. So we're gonna have a look at some photos I took with the lens I used to own for one year. Unfortunately, I don't have it right here with me, but I do have a lens that is very similar in terms of sizing and handling. It is the Ultron 28mm um, and I will show it to you on my M body and you can maybe get a little bit of impression how it looks and um, yeah, we just get right into it. So. This is the Vogtländer 28mm Ultron and it is a very small lens, a very compact lens and a very lightweighted lens just as the Nocton 1.4 and um, in terms of the handling and the user experience I would say these lenses are very similar. Um, I think the Nocton 1.4 is even a little bit shorter and also lighter so this lens is 220 grams and the Nocton 1.4 has only 190 grams um, so it is perfect if you're just looking for a lens that you can put in your hand body and sh uh, wrap it around your shoulder take it all day with you and you will barely notice it because it's just very light so yeah the Vogtländer Nocton is a 1.4 aperture lens and um, we want to talk a little bit about shooting 1.4 with this lens which I think is the purpose that most people will use it when they have a 1.4 lens shoot it wide open um, because this lens has a lot of character and a lot of special looks for it that you have to like I would say for me personally I really like the look and the rendition of this lens um, but it has also some downsides that we want to talk about so at first talking about sharpness we will get plenty of sharpness and shooting 1.4 in the middle um, looking in the corners I would say you would not probably notice um, unsharpness because this lens vignettes a lot so the corners will get very dark and you won't be able to see if it is sharp or it is not sharp um, but the corners yeah they rip off a little bit and you will have to stop down to f4 to f5 to get rid of this um, nevertheless it is a very nice rendition the bokeh shooting at 1.4 is similar to the bokeh that you can get with yeah I think uh, vintage lenses in general um, it has the look of lenses from the 50s 60s 70s some people call it harsh the rendition I would say it is more yeah it looks almost comic-y um, like sketched bokeh balls um, and I think it's very interesting but it's character so you have to like the picture look um, it is not the clear rendition that you can expect with modern lenses such as the Sony 35mm G Master that is recording me right now um, but still I liked it a lot and uh, think it is very interesting if you go into that look stopping down to f4, f5, f6, f8 you will have I would say um, enough sharpness also in the corners if you go into street photography and want to capture um, street life you will have sharp images um, shooting with f8 I would say the handling is pretty much the same as it is on this Ultron um, the focusing ring it ran very smoothly and also the aperture ring clicked very nicely um, the focusing tab I love it to be honest um, there are lens options especially when you go into the design system they do not have lens focusing tabs and um, you have to search around for the tab or grab the whole tube to wrap your fingers around and then go into focusing um, this one you can always take your fingers on it and find it and know where you are so I really like this one um, yeah and also the build quality is very sturdy very compact 
You have to know that these lenses are manufactured by Cosina, uh, a Japanese manufacturer, and Zeiss lenses are also manufactured at Cosina Japan. Um, of course, the engineering behind this and the material choices will be different, of course. Um, I mean, this is another price range than the Zeiss lenses are usually. Um, but you will not expect any bad lenses coming from Cosina these days. And uh, Vogtländer have really stepped up their game the last few years um, regarding the Leica M lenses or any kind of lenses they came out with. So I can recommend it. It is a very well-built lens and uh, you will not be disappointed. So let's say you're not really a fan of the vintage rendition. You will have some other options coming from Vogtländer directly. Um, there is the 35mm Nocturne as well, a Nocturne 1.2. But this is a spherical lens, so the rendition will be way different. Um, I own the 50mm Nocturne uh, spherical 1.2 and um, I would say the image quality is comparable to the Summerlux. Um, it is a very good lens, very good rendition, very good sharpness, um, even at f1.2. Um, so coming from that kind of lens, I think the 35mm and regarding the reviews I've seen on this one, um, 1.2 is a very good lens as well. It is more expensive. The Nocturne 1.4 costs about, I think, 600 to 700 euros. The 1.2 version is vertical, is around 1000. Um, but the image quality um, is a different one, um, a better one if you want to say it like that. Um, maybe this is an option for you. And also you can go into the ultra section um, this here is the 28mm, but they also have a 35mm, starting with the f2 aperture, so you won't have the f1.4, um, but you will have a lot of sharpness, and it's also an aspherical lens, um, so you won't have an issue with yeah, the rendition if it's kind of disturbing for you. You will get cleaner images with these lenses. So now that we have talked about the Vogtländer 35mm, and the Vogtländer options, I will show you the lenses, the 35mm lens options from that I think are the best. And we will start with the Zeiss 1.4 Distagon. This is a very beautiful lens and I think in terms of rendition and image quality, this is at least as good as the Summerlux. Some people say it is even better. Uh, some people talk about micro detail, so this so-called size 3D pop. Um, I don't want to get into this discussion, but for me personally, I like this lens a lot. It is just very large and bulky and heavy. And um, if you have it on your Leica M system, it will tend to lean over because it is such a heavy lens and it makes the camera um, being a little bit off balance. So if I carry it around all day, it can get maybe a little bit heavy. We always have to remember that we are talking about Leica M system camera um, that is made of solid metal. For example, if you have a Sony A7 or A4 combined with a G Master lens or a Sigma lens, 35 mm 1.4, you will be much more heavier and much more bulky as you will be with the M system. But of course, no autofocus, so this is not comparable one-to-one, -one, but um, just in terms of a uh, good travel or a good everyday camera option. And then we have the Leica Sunlux 1.4. Really, really, really beautiful lens. And it is also very small, actually. If you take off the lens hood, I will probably always keep it on because it would just protect the front glass and I don't want, do not want to have scratches on this on this glass. Um, this is a lens that costs new about 5,000 euros. Um, if you get lucky, as I did, you will get a good deal on the used market for around 3K, but still a very expensive lens. For me, it was just the best option because it is very small and it is very compact and you will just get the perfect balance with the Leica camera and um, yeah in terms of image quality I would say as good as the Zeiss 
and um, for me it's the perfect lens to carry it around every day so the rendition of this one is probably a little bit more even but the bokeh is as creamy and as beautiful as it is on this ice one um yeah people really get into get into the discussions about the little things that will separate this lens from the this second but i think their lenses are very equal in terms of image quality and so if you have two pictures compared side by side one taken with the Summerlux, one taken with the Distagon, you probably would not notice any difference so it is just yeah the price that you pay for having a more compact lens on the used market you will probably find this one for around about 1200 new i think it costs about 1.8 um this one is obviously a lot more expensive yeah and there are people out there who say if you have a leica then you have to put leica glass on for me i don't think so at all i think uh, you just have to go in every direction and look for what suits you best and um, what is appealing to you and your photography style and um, if you have it in your hands how does it feel the pictures how do they look and um, I think this can be a process and something that changes from time to time. Um, yeah, so just go with direction you ever feel good, I would say. Talking about the Leica options, if you want to go the 35mm route, we will have the 35mm Summicron for the Leica system that is a native lens. Also, aperture is by f.2. And um, so it is the equivalent of the Vogtländer Ultron 35mm f.2 and um, yeah but this one is also very expensive I think it costs around about 4,000 euros new and used the older version about 2,000 euros and then there are other options but they start with the aperture at 2.8 and um, go up to 3.5 something like this which is not really an option for me because I really like to shoot uh, wide open um, even if it's not for the background separation but just the having the option to shoot wide open at night times capture more light so i think we've done a lot of talking right now a lot of theoretical stuff and um, a lot of my experience um, i would like to show you some more pictures if you were interested then just uh, keep on and uh, yeah have a look at the photos i took with the 35 millimeter Vogtländer nocton 1.4 multi-coated version 2 Thanks for tuning in and maybe see you in the next video.